Well, we have finally completed the Steps to Kingdom, or the revision of the Steps to Kingdom, which came out of just a very um, rush, sort of just a, off the, spontaneous is the word I'm looking for, reply to an email about, well, how do you actually do it? How do you go about moving from being stuck in the system to being free in kingdoms, in tribes, looking after each other, that paradise that we all dream of? So we thought we'd do some talking about it to accompany the other videos that we've just released because it's all, it's all leading to the same thing. So first of all, I just want to read you the first paragraph of this thing we've written. Would you like to live in a world of everlasting peace, truth, freedom, joy, abundance and do no harm for all? Harm, do no harm for all? A world where there is no loss of uniqueness and no need for slaves and rulers. A world where there is no need for locks on the doors or savings in the bank account. No need to fear the men and women around us and no underlying security, insecurity to prevent us from ever feeling truly at peace. Well, in a way, they're very silly questions, aren't they? Because we would all love to live in a world like this. I think the real question is, what are you prepared to do to bring around about such a world as this? Are you prepared to give something up? Are you prepared to make sacrifices? And sacrifice is a pretty dirty world, word these days. What is it that you will give up? So you, perhaps you will get some of this, but particularly your children and then your grandchildren will actually live in a world like this, where they don't have to be always worrying about the mortgage, about the money, the food on the table, locking the doors, their insurance, all those sorts of things. So this is what the Steps to Kingdom is about, because we all know, yes, we want to live there, but now we're so stuck and so compromised and rushed off our feet and stressed and worried for most, it's really difficult to see how we can get from here to there. So we wrote this Steps of Kingdom, and we did call it the Ten Steps to Kingdom, first of all. But we realised, well, we're not really all about ABCs and one, two, threes, and, and the number isn't important. What is important is, is the steps we take as we do them, and who knows, maybe some will come one way around or some will come another. Until we do this, we don't know exactly how it's going to work, but at least we can have a vision of a very clear vision of the end so we know it, we've got a very we know exactly where we're headed and then as and uh, some ideas as to how we can get there which of course may need to be changed as we go along The way we look at life and the way we feel it's the only way for all of us to live if we really want to live peacefully together and for everyone to have abundance in their lives is that life is a gift, which means my life is not about me and what I want, me, 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 I, I, I want another house, another car, this. It's about what can I do for um, my brothers and sisters of life today? What can I do for all the other life forms of life? If we're living life as a gift, then... Uh, we have there are no belief systems there's nothing to cause us um, harm between each other because we're just all living as a gift and if I'm taking care of everybody in the tribe and everybody in the tribe is taking care of me then I don't have to worry about my needs because I'm being taken care of I don't have to think about where my food's coming on because there's someone out there in my my tribe who's going oh yeah here there's a plate of food for Fiona there it's um it's that's that's also our, our great protection because we don't have to hide behind anything when we're just living lives as lives as it lives as a gift of love as it were. Now the first step, if I can call it that, is one that we have said over and over and over and over and over again in discussions and videos and um, articles. We have to learn to scrutinise all the information we are taking in that we base our lives on. And this is so utterly vital because if we don't know, to, if we can't recognise what information is keeping us stuck where we are in these lives of hell basically, and what information will lead us to the paradise we dream of, then we're never going to get anywhere. So we have to learn to look at our thinking and what we are thinking and where those thoughts are taking us. Again, we've written lots about this. But um, 
as it says here, we have to learn the information of life that supports life and maintains life. If we do not know that information, we will never be able to live a life that supports and maintain life. If we are still bringing information of the system into our kingdom, and uh, then which is really information of death, then that is what we will be creating in our kingdoms. We'll be bringing the system in, we'll end up with power and control, we'll end up with all the usual dramas, everyone's baggage and we'll get nowhere there. It will be an yet another failed community. And there are so many of them that I know a lot of people out there go, oh, community, you know, and they shiver because all they hear is problems with egos and, and disagreements over money and disagreements over this that have caused a, um, caused a community to fall apart. So if we don't want to have a community that falls apart, we have to know exactly what our brains have to be thinking to, um, to get there. And this doesn't mean we all have to think the same way. We need to be able to recognise within us, each of us, what we have that's baggage of the system that stops us maybe doing something, stops us giving freely, stops us loving freely, all those sort of things. So we can work with that. It's not about you have to be perfect before you can start a kingdom. It's about being willing to recognise that we've all got letting go to do. We've all got baggage of the system. We've all got brainwashing from the system. And it's, sometimes it is going to be very challenging to live closely with other people and and have all your your baggage come up but you know you can we can all support each other to get through that if people are willing to say yeah okay i've got baggage and okay we've got to deal with it now that's okay there's nothing wrong with that but that's what we need to do so this first one is vital the information which means thinking reading studying obviously particularly the love for life work because that explains very clearly how to distinguish what is information of the system and, and what is um information of life or kingdom as it were which I suppose I could repeat it again we always look for the information we're looking at what does it do to bring about this world of peace truth freedom etc now if the information does nothing to do with that then what's the point of wasting our time on it really? And this saves us like 20 years of research. We can research everything for years and years on whether the Anunnaki exist, whether um, civilizations were once under the sea, all this sort of stuff. But unless that information is helping us moment by moment, day by day, co-create this world we dream of, there's not really much point in spending too much time on it. It's, it's useful to get some background information, but basically it's okay, what can we do here and now to get this thing rolling? So learn to know, comprehend what's going on in your brain. Second step, I've got, we learn to just take care of our daily acts of love and our daily acts of love take care of everything else. This again is uh, more about learning to give freely. Very few people can actually give freely these days because mainly because the system is constantly telling them, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you don't hang on to what you've got, you know, you'll be in trouble. They'll, you'll be on the streets. There'll be no one there for you because generally in the system there isn't anyone there for you if you fall, you know, you fall off the rails as it were. But that's what Kingdom's all about.
and that's our experience very much now with Hannah and Andy on board is that we're all just pitching in for each other and it means we're all living far more abundantly than any of us were living before because we're not hanging on saying well hold on that was my money and I put in that much last week and oh but I've paid this bill and all that we're just doing what needs to be done to to keep us all fed and healthy and, and here basically and it's also the second step this act of love it's learning um learning not to pike out just when things get a little bit difficult you know we may have issues that arise between us but if if we all still have that dream in our head that that's where we want to go we can we can let, deal with those issues that arise between us by talking about them discussing them working out well how do we make it work for you and how do we make it work for you and and you know doing that with love we can work through those sort of things you know people who come for the wrong reasons usually will not find it very comfortable to be among a whole lot of people who are there for you know a dream a goal because they won't get any fire to their smoke as it were or to their spark they they you know if everyone's going okay well you can believe all that but I'm focused on this dream here then in the end it becomes a bit boring for them and, and they go away so I don't think we need to get fearful or worried about who's you know coming in on your life Arthur and I have certainly had, we will always welcome people to come and visit us because we don't really have anything to fear from anybody <clears throat> because we, we treat everybody the same, we talk to everybody the same and we have nothing to hide so therefore we can't really be harmed. I mean unless someone wants to walk in with a gun and shoot us or something, we, you know, they, they can't harm us just by who they are and what they think and feel, they're entitled to think and feel whatever they like. But we don't need to get into fear and secrecy and, oh, well, well, this is an inner core and an outer core. It's all about being open and just, um, you know, the information's there for everybody and there's no ownership of any information involved or anything else, really.
a strength that certainly all the tribes of, um, you know, whenever long ago, you'll see, and it was really out of a necess necessity for survival, they had to stick together no matter what because, you know, they were surviving and they were, perhaps they might be under attack from another tribe and if they didn't all stick together, they would, they'd be nothing, you know, one person alone was nothing, which is true it's today against the force of the system. We just don't realise how we're alone against the system and they can pick on us. But if we are strong together, that's how we provide the community immunity for each other. If someone from the system wants to come and pick on one of us, maybe arrest one of us, we say, fine, you can do that, but we're all coming too, or half the community is coming too, and we're not going to leave this matter alone till it's sorted out, or whatever they want to do. Um, so it's really this community immunity, being prepared to stand there for each other and stand by each other. If we stand firm as a group, we can achieve anything. It's when we allow ourselves to go, oh, well, this is getting a bit tricky, or, oh, I don't quite like facing this situation, or, or um, oh, well, I, you know, I don't agree with that bit, so I can't be part of that. It's, you know, there's got to be give and take and compromise, but basically you stand firm as a tribe, because then you're, then you're going to be pretty invincible. And with the whole um, part of the community immunity, it's it's our community looking after us, but it's also very much involving the wider community and that it is vital that we, through whatever means, you know, each of us feels comfortable with, whether it's through the music and videos we're making, through people going out, talking to people on the streets, having stalls at markets where, again, we talk to people, and just generally being involved in the wider community. So the people around us, know why we're there and we're putting out the message that we're not some weird cult or sect we're not a religion and we're not violent we're not into guns we're all about peace and we're all about do no harm and um and this is a huge achilles heel for the um for the powers that be because they can they will never admit that they want to do harm to others so if we start talking about look we're all about do no harm how can we do no harm in every area of our lives and this is what we are learning and if that message is out in the wider community very strongly and plus globally as we um, put everything out on the internet which we do until it um, comes down then um, it's very hard for the powers that be to create a sort of Waco situation where, oh yeah, there was some religious sect and they all had to wear green on Tuesdays or, you know, all sort of stuff like that. It's very important that we are so out in the open because this is totally our protection. This is absolutely where we are protected. So there's no secrets, no lies. Anyone who comes gets the, you know, it's fine. You just come and you see what's going on. There's, then that's our protection. What we can do that's a very um, sensitive point, I think, with a lot of people. Um, the tribe uses its combined fiction to step out of the fiction. While they still have any fictional commercial value, we sell up houses, land, assets, etc. to buy a piece of land for kingdom. Well, because at the minute we're all, a lot of us are in this situation where we all want to get on some land. It's proven very hard to find anywhere to rent a lot of people don't have the money to buy land though I think most of us who don't have the money and really want to do this we're in the position that if someone gave us a million dollars tomorrow we'd instantly buy land it wouldn't be about what can I buy with my million dollars for me it's about right let's get this thing happening but what we find is that a lot of people who have something like a house or land or something 
they've been infected by the ownership bug and because of the fears constantly pushed, pressed upon them by the information centres of the system, um, there's a lot of fear about letting go and of, of the ownership of this thing. I mean, the thing is that, you know, really, if you've got land and a whole bunch of people move in and, and make this great community, then you're always going to be looked after. You're always going to be cared for. And you're always going to have food and everything you need because that's what we can, we can provide together for each other if we live as a community. But this, there's always the fear, but what happens if it falls apart? And what happens if, um, you know, I'm forced to leave or they do dreadful things and I don't like it and whatever. And so this is part of this learning to give freely because if someone can give freely of some land and go, okay, well, there you go, just let's do it. And it's not about, well, you can have the land if you do it this way, or you can have the land if you do it that way. Learning how to take responsibility for our lives is the key as well because we only have a system because we have stopped being responsible for our lives. We've only got the government, the military, the law, judges, Medicare, educators, nutritionists, finance experts, all of those because we are not taking responsibility for our lives. But obviously the downside of that is that if we are not prepared to take responsibility for our lives, we have to accept that the people we pass the buck to will take charge of us and treat us like children, which is precisely what happens. They tell us what we can and can't do and where we can and can't go and how we can and can't live. But that's, it's our fault, I have to say. It's all our fault because if we took responsibility for our own lives, they would have no part to play with us. So that is very important to remember. The important thing is, again, it shows how we cannot just run off and try and create our own little... Um, pristine area, our own nice little um, land where we grow our food and whatever, while out there there is still chaos. We cannot hope to have peace and truth and freedom when no one else around us is having that, as we say here and we've said before. If all around us is peace, we have peace. If all around us is freedom, we have freedom. If all around us is abundance, we have abundance. If all around us is joy, we have joy. If all around us is do no harm, we have do no harm. When we see life as a gift, all this is possible. If we don't see life as a gift, maintaining distrust and thinking there is no way out, then this is what we create in our lives. So if we are sincere in wanting peace, freedom, truth, abundance, joy and do no harm in our lives, the quickest way to get that is to start making sure there's peace, freedom, truth, joy, abundance and do no harm in the lives of all those around us. I mean, these steps are, are a guideline, but even so, we can't be sure exactly how everything's going to work because we don't know everything that we're going to learn along the way of creating kingdom. And sure, there may be mistakes we make and we have to backtrack and do other things, but that's just all part of the learning process. 
Um, and also very important, we, we've read about quite a lot of kingdoms or communities and it's all about, and again, this is just people trying to find a way to start something within the system, is, well, then you can come if you've got this many dollars and you can buy this bit of land. And, you know, you can you don't have as much so you can buy this smaller bit or you can buy some, do something and then you can work so many hours. It all becomes another system because the way we look at it, I mean, it seems that in the system, the fictional dollars are regarded as more important than anything else. Whereas the way we see it, someone may come to Kingdom with absolutely nothing in terms of fictional dollars, but may, they may have a wealth of information and skills that that frankly are worth a lot more than the money because when it comes to building the infrastructure of the kingdom and getting things going they're just going to be a gold mine so that's why as well we are not interested in okay let's buy up a portion of not that we've got any money to buy anything but you know we'll divide it up and everyone puts in their twenty thousand dollars or something like this and and um off we go to to us that's still the exclusivity and privilege of money within the system, which is what the, the system's all about. It's, it's all based on levels of this exclusivity and privilege, and the more fictional wealth you have, the more exclusivity and privilege you can have, the more choices you have, and the better, better things you can get. we are all unique and we each bring our uniqueness to kingdom which is why every kingdom is unique the sum of the uniqueness of each man woman or child of the tribe so again it's not about forming a role model or strictly following the Anastasia model for a kingdom it's about the each kingdom will have its unique group of men women and children who therefore co create a unique kingdom because of the different people that they are There's, there's no rules and regulations, no clones, as it were. As we say here, we are no one's sheep nor shepherd. Again, it's, it's not about having the rules of you have to do this and you have to do that. And I think this is one of the hardest things to, for us all to learn. It's how to take responsibility for what we're doing within the kingdom and not put our ideas and conditions of what other people should be doing based on what we feel. Like if I like to get up early and um, get up and go out in the garden for an hour every morning or two, then that's fine. I can do that. But it doesn't mean I should start going, oh yeah, but, but I've been out in the garden for an hour this morning and, and I get up every morning and, and get out in the garden and, and no one else is doing that. Or so and so staying in bed. And doing that it's not about that perhaps so-and-so does stay in bed a little bit longer but perhaps so-and-so is doing something else later on that I'm not doing so it's really about um, trying to get rid of our conditioning and attachments to what people should be doing and taking care of what we feel we should be doing in our responsibilities like you know oh geez the kitchen's a bit dirty and I haven't been in there today perhaps I'll go clean up the kitchen you know it can be simple things like that that's all if everyone does that it's light work for anyone no one gets left no one gets left carrying the load of of the dirty jobs as it were um, so that's why we say no one's sheep nor shepherd because we've got to get back into learning to follow the inspirations of of what we feel we we, we are called to do without making it a condition that someone else does it too and without um, thinking that perhaps our inspiration without again without um, not taking care of our responsibilities to the tribe as well you know it's because finding that sort of balance between the two of them as we say with uh, kingdom it's not so much about rules the it's a guideline of do no harm if with everything we're doing we obviously at the beginning we're going to do harm because we don't know how to do certain things without it but as we go along the way the new things we come across that we need to say okay we need to work out how to do this now as much as possible we go okay can we do this with no harm or what's the minimal harm we can do how can we make it work so we're minimizing harm and as we learn as we you know different people bring different pieces of information we gradually gradually learn to 
get less and less harm going along the way. We've seen that often communities, I think it's been easy for the system to demonise communities because they tend to often get a bit insular and, you know, keep, especially the ones that are based on certain beliefs and systems and all that. And so you end up with a Waco situation where if the, um, the system, those behind the system wish to send in um, their enforcers, they can do so and spread all sorts of rumours about what's actually going on. So for us, well, it's twofold, partly for that, but also because we want to provide a living demonstration of how we can live peacefully together with no or minimal harm. Um, it is very important that we are open to the wider community. So once we're sort of set up and have got a bit of infrastructure going that we can offer workshops and um, demonstrations of, of what to do, plus we can offer surplus food for people, we can um, do classes in how to eat more healthily. As time goes on, we, we get you know, people who are expert in, in fields of healing, we can have people come to help heal their bodies. We can have a community school. This is what we really dream of, is having a school based on something like the Shatenin School in, um, in Russia, where, they are getting, where children are actually teaching themselves and each other. And they're learning phenomenally quickly because they're not stuck in the, the rut of just being told information. They're actually discovering information for themselves, which means they learn it far more quickly and, and are far more interested. Um, and also that means our, our community school is open to people from the wider community. So if the um, those behind the system wish to conduct a smear campaign, you've got someone going down the road going, but hold on a minute, my child goes and plays with their child, you know, or or I get fresh veggies from them when they've got leftovers or, or whatever. So people are aware of what we're doing and being totally out in the open, which we've always been, putting stuff on the internet while, it, while it's still here. So people know what's going on. we've always felt we, we want to have a sort of sanctuary so because sometimes people need to if they're escaping from the system possibly because they finally stood up and uh, standing up for for what's right rather than just following along and or possibly there's so many people out there who are just exhausted by life in the system and we've had people come in and say oh could I just could I just sleep for a couple of weeks or something like that so we need somewhere that people can come and just yeah you need to rest for a little while okay fine just you can go and rest there or you just need sanctuary from whatever whatever's going on in your life come and come and have a rest now the mud room which we also talk about because as i mentioned before of this um the importance of distinguishing what information we are living our lives by we have always envisioned that if we had a large piece of land first off everything we establish will be in like say 10 acres of land the land if it's bigger and within this what we call the mudroom as if you can imagine most mudrooms are places you come in from outside it's the place where you take off your dirty boots and your wet raincoats and um, where the dogs sleep and all that sort of stuff and then you go into the house which is cleaner as it were so this is the the mudroom is the place where we all hang around so and live and do everything that we need to do while we're establishing our community gardens and our community infrastructure of schools whatever um, this is so this is all about letting go of all that brainwashing of the system while we're in a smaller place so we do not infect the rest of the kingdom with that stuff we stay in the mudroom partly because it's very good for us to live closely together while we learn to live with each other because that is probably the biggest challenge of all is learning to actually get on with each other again so we stay in the mudroom and we learn what we are carrying of the system with us and we learn to let it go so by the time we are ready to go and establish our family kin domain out in out in the in the wider um, area of land we have pretty much left the system baggage behind us we know we know what we're thinking, we know how to think. Um, the, the thoughts that are going to co-create life 
and how to how to leave behind the thoughts that are just all about the system and would bring the system in. And then this mudroom, when um, when people have moved out from the mudroom, they still come back and put their time into the whole infrastructure for people who are coming, people learning, the school, etc, etc. So the whole thing is supported, even when people have moved out into um, their kin domains. And of course, being community, uh, you know, someone moves out, we all go help plant their gardens, we all go help... Um, build their houses and, and get everything ready for them and then we're all supported. Now the mudroom it's again it's where we keep the mud of the system so at first while we are still connected to the internet and telephone and all that technology while people are still perhaps operating businesses to keep fictional dollars coming in until we have the manpower and the facilities in place to just um, get out of commerce altogether but for the meantime that all stays in the mudroom so anything connected to the system stays in the mudroom so the commerce the technology all those sort of things we keep in the mudroom and um, we don't let that go out into the wider area of the kingdom even when people have moved out to kin domains, the community school is still there and there are still community centres where people can come and stay and learn about healing and eating and everything else. So um, that will all stay. It's not, not something... We, it's for us to live in while we learn what we need to learn and then when we've moved on, it's still very much a vital part of the kingdom because it's the, it's the outreach, as it were, of the outreach into the wider community of the kingdom so we're not cutting ourselves off from them. And the mudroom is very much about, it's our transition from men and women who have grown up learning only to be um, dependent on the system for all our needs, to be sucking on the nipples of the corporations of the system, learning through both through practical means and through um, um, examining our belief systems and, and all our ideas that keep us tied to the system. What we're aiming for is to learn it's our transition where we learn to take responsibility for our own lives instead of waiting for someone else to do it. It's about not passing the buck anymore. And so that's what we learn together in the mudroom. It's how to how we're going to live. So we, we're taking responsibility for our lives, responsibility for life and providing for all our needs without needing the system. And when that's when we we are heading towards freedom bar any um, attacks by the force of the system when we have learned we don't need them for our power, we don't need them for food, we don't need them for schools, we don't need them for transport, we don't need them for anything anymore. That's when we can truly turn our backs on the system and that's when it truly fades away because there's no one going, oh, but, but, but I just want that little bit of the system. It's like, it's either no system or all system. You can't have a bit of the system. You really and and in the you know obviously the transition period we will be using stuff from the system we're using the internet we're using this we'll be recycling building materials we'll be doing all that sort of stuff and, and what better way you know it's like the garbage warrior um, building homes out of all the waste amazing houses it's if the more we can use of all the waste we are creating at the moment the better but the end result the end idea is that we just we no longer produce any waste so there's nothing that we have to recycle and we're learning to live without anything of the system at all that is when we get our freedom and that is when we can have peace and um, truth and all those things the vital thing in this transition period as well in the mudroom what we're the main thing we are learning which is what probably which is what does determine whether our kingdoms become thriving paradises or whether everything falls apart and everyone runs back to the system is learning to live as gifts of life because everything we do is a creation in every moment every thought we have that we put action to is something we are creating so it's about are we willing to give to do everything for the community to put all our life into the community and create all our gifts of love that we create every day are for the community because when we do that that's when we start to find the freedom in that we no longer need the infrastructure of the system we get to the point we don't need money anymore because we've grown so much food because of all of our acts of love of growing food every day and um, learning to eat healthily every day so we don't need all the rubbish of the system it's about we 
we are learning to look after each other and take care of each other. If anyone's sick, they're taken care of. We don't need the Medicare anymore. We don't need books full of figures anymore because we're not bothered about the money in, anymore. It, that, that's when um, we've got our freedom. But that is only comes when we are willing to let go of our belief systems. Because once we have a belief system, we need a system for it to be managed in. When we learn to let go of our belief systems, let go of what's keeping us apart, and just be living about well what can we do and I think the most beautiful example of this some many of you have probably seen that video a man who truly from a high caste Indian background who has totally given up his life to caring for people and he is so happy in what he does. Um, we'll put the link up so you can see that. And um, obviously this video, I forgot to mention before, it sort of goes hand in hand. There's a lot of other stuff that Arthur talks about in The Dream of Life part one, two and three. And um, it's good to watch those as well as this because he gives a lot more background information both into the system and into some of the things that I've mentioned here. Where we do it because we certainly have people say to us oh why don't you go up north it's really nice there why don't you you know it's really cheap land out west and all that sort of stuff but we feel it's really important for us to be somewhere close to where a lot of people are because we have to take some responsibility for the damage that we've been part of we've all been living in the system we've all been living in ways that are doing harm and so besides providing a a demonstration of look we don't have to live like this we also need to be around to clean up the land and again this is why we really need to be um, getting more agricultural land not the beautiful pristine rainforest where we'd all love to live we need to be living in re um re um can't think of the word uh, revitalizing the the land that's been ruined by agriculture or by clearing or whatever, we need to be in there planting those trees and remineralizing the soil and, and everything. It's no good going to paradise, you know, a bit of the earth that's still remaining paradise and just ignoring all the stuff that's been decimated. We need to actually heal that, uh, all of the earth, all over the earth, and not just run away and ignore the bits that we've decimated. We've got to be in there and actually, you know, doing stuff. So then gradually our bit will turn into a beautiful, pristine paradise. And then that can join on to the other beautiful pristine paradises until that's all we have. The aim of staying around a lot of people as well is because the more people who come to visit us and realise what they are part of by being in the system, what they're supporting and maintaining, the more of them will start to go, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. As it says, we wish to be the Pandora's box of the system because as many come and see what we can do, they can take it away and start doing it where they live. and. We, you know, we can, members of our kingdom can come and help with them setting up their kingdoms, but the more people, and particularly all the white collar workers who are actively, you know, they're part of the machine of harm that is the system, they too will learn to, they hopefully will get to the point, they just go, I can't keep doing this anymore because of all the harm I'm causing. And then they too will, will cause this mass exodus from the system, which is um, what we all hope for, because that's that's the way... That's the way we bring the system down, not through violence or 
um, war or hatred or greed, it's by just taking all our energy out of it because without us, the system is nothing. Once we remove our energy, everything grinds to a halt. I mean, just imagine if no one went to work in the banks for a week. The whole economy would grind to a halt. Wouldn't hurt anything. <laughs> We'd all probably be better off for it. So um, it's it's about removing our energy. And when again, we're not saying, right, get up now, walk out and of your job and just, uh, you know, come go out to a bit of bush or something. You probably won't survive, but it's about starting to take steps of what can I do, which can include selling up a bit of land or, or a house or something like that and and putting it towards something getting us all started Finally, we get there. You know, we maybe not be our generation or the next generation, perhaps not even the generation after that, but it's where we have got to the point that we um, we are living again on a pristine earth, and our children are being brought up in nature, learning to use their unique brains uniquely, um, learning to connect with all the information of consciousness and to expand the dream of life with their life and their inspirations. We've got food forests everywhere, our eco sort of sustainable homes are around the place if we still need them and we are, um, everyone is included, there's no exclusivity or privilege, no one's left out, we're healing all the damage and there are kingdoms all over the place where we always have somewhere to stay if we travel and we all support each other in the protection and the co-creation of the dream of life and the system, we just keep alive a memory of the system just to remind us what happens when we give life to thoughts that are not of the dream of life. So perhaps that's a story we have to pass down through the generations. Hey, look, this is what happens. So make sure you keep 
make sure we keep thinking and um, co-creating with the dream of life. Um, if you like what we're talking about in this video, please do make sure you look at the other videos we've just produced, The Dream of Life, Part 1, 2 and 3. Uh, it's great that we're finally doing videos. We've been wanting to do them for a while because we're aware that a lot of people don't want to sit and read that much. But on those videos are also links to articles where we discuss more and more of what I've said all about how, um, you know, life is a gift and that's how we need to live if if we want the world we all dream of. And, it all, and they also cover a lot more about the system and how it has affected our thinking and continues to affect our thinking and it's which is as I said before it's very important to learn to work out whose voice is in your head is it your unique inspiration or is it a system voice telling you what to think and feel and please feel free to get in contact with us if there's this dream resonates for you and if you have anything to offer, whether it's fictional dollars or whether it's skills in some area. We desperately are getting to the stage we need to move because we need a lot more space. Our house is filled to bursting now and there's only so much room in the garden for growing food. Um, but we also we also need somewhere people can come and stay for the weekend. We get a lot of inquiries. Are you doing workshops? When are you doing workshops? We haven't got the space here and we haven't got the money to go and hire halls or whatever to do that in. Um, so we need somewhere we can have the studios. We have a studio here, but it's small and cramped and in the house and that gets difficult. We need, um, so we can get out more music, more videos. We'd love to find an animator out there who's interested in putting, setting a few of our stories to animation. Um, anything that you've got that you can offer that you would like to offer, i.e. that you can give freely, because otherwise there's no point in giving it, um, please do contact us. Please come. We need space. <laughs> thank you for listening I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope you are inspired um, by the video in your own unique way to work out what you can do to help things um, we will put this up on the website and that we'll provide the link now so it's the same link as the other one has always been but this is the new improved version and um, please contact us <laughs>